The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. During cold season, at some point, you need to measure your body's temperature. When I was a kid, my mom used to stick this type of thermometer in my mouth. But today, there's another way. I really could have said that different. I meant using one of these IR meters for the ear. The interesting thing about these two human test tools is that they also represent the two methods we can use in electronics. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, and in this episode, we talk about how to measure the temperature of your electronics. Years ago, back when I still had beautiful curly hair, I was told, if you can keep your finger on a part for more than five seconds, its temperature is okay. There is a problem with that advice. What if the component is so hot you cannot touch it for that long? Well, knowing which parts are getting hot can be a great troubleshooting step. So using either an infrared thermometer or a thermal couple, you can determine a component's temperature without losing your fingerprints. First up, let's talk about how to measure by contact with the thermal couple. Thermal couples are two different metals welded together into a junction. The temperature of that junction creates a small voltage that changes with temperature. Thermal couples are great because they are very accurate and can have a wide range. As shown on this chart, some can measure well past 1000 degrees C. There are two considerations when using them. First, the really small voltage they create needs an amplifier. And second, they really need physical contact. You could use an Arduino with something like this Adafruit board, which is a thermocouple amplifier. Or you can use a multimeter designed for thermal couples. For example, this Multicomp Pro DMM comes with a Type K probe and has a mode for temperature. Handhelds are usually fixed to one type, while a bench DMM might have profiles for multiple types. As I said, thermal couples need physical contact, otherwise they are measuring the air and not your component. Now, even though this junction looks like a soldered joint, it isn't. Since this K-type works well past 600 degrees, you are probably not going to solder it to anything. I tried anyway and ended up only being able to measure the tip of my iron. So instead of soldering, you have to rely on mechanical contact. When I use my super advanced reflow oven, I try to stick the thermal couple into a hole on the PCB. Another option is to use high temperature polyimide or Kapton tape to attach to something like this heatsink. Though my experience has been that while the film can handle 400 degrees Celsius, its adhesive usually cannot. Or at least not for very long. Anyway, notice how the thermal couple shows a new temperature that is about the same. This measurement suggests to me that the heat sink is drawing the heat away from the silicon, but not doing much more. By the way, I did not talk about thermistors, which are resistors that change temperature with resistance. Wait a minute. I mean, they change resistance with temperature. You could use one of these with something like an Arduino to monitor a circuit. However, that's more of a design-in activity and less of a characterization or troubleshooting step. So I decided not to cover them in this video. Okay, next, let's talk about a contactless method using infrared. Here is an infrared thermometer, or as I call it, an IR gun. And for real, another name is pyrosensor. You point it at something, hit the trigger, and it displays a temperature. On this model, there is a laser pointer, which is only a visual aid. It is not part of the actual measurement. Inside of this tool is a lens which focuses thermal radiation into a sensor. These work because everything emits electromagnetic thermal radiation across a wide range of frequencies. We call something red hot or white hot because as it gets hotter, the emitted electromagnetic spectrum changes. However, even in that case, something that looks white because of the blue light being emitted still has like 99% of its energy in the infrared range. Every material has a different emissivity associated with it. 
Emissivity is a measure of how effectively a surface emits infrared radiation. Here is a plastic bowl, a shiny aluminum block, and a piece of cardboard. They are all sitting at room temperature, but notice how the IR gun measures different temperatures for each. For this reason, a thermometer like this one lets you change the emissivity setting for the material you are measuring. Now, this is where things become problematic. If I point this at a circuit board's fiberglass, the RAM's plastic package, and a metal shield, they all have different temperatures because of their emissivity differences. However, if you are just looking for the hot spots, maybe that doesn't matter as much. You just need to know the rough order of magnitude. If you're monitoring something like the chip on this Raspberry Pi 4, you should configure the IR thermometer for metal and point it at the metal lid of the SOC. When using an IR gun, there are three things to remember. The emissivity of the material, which we just talked about. Its field of view, which is then related to its distance. As you move farther or closer, the field of view changes. For emissivity, here is an eye chart full of examples from the manual for this Tenma thermometer. There's way too much information to look at here, so let's use a simple summary. Use 0.3 if it is shiny like metal, and 0.9 if it is not shiny, like cardboard. One last thing, thermal cameras are a third way to measure temperature, but because really they are just the type of IR sensor with more resolution and a pretty picture, I decided not to cover them. But if that is something you think we should cover, then let me know over on the Element 14 community. While you're there, you can check out the show notes for this episode, which include product links, reference materials, and some projects to DIY your own temperature tools. I am the Bald Engineer, and I thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to measuring thermal radiation on my electronics workbench. Mm -hmm.